guys have some ideas of symbols in your head that represent 9-11 to you? We had a note card and we had to write a symbol that resembled 9-11, so like the American flag, the Twin Towers, Unity, all that. Henry snuck into Kane Ozzy's castle. While this looks very simple, they need to be able to work with other people. They need to overcome mistakes and challenges. They gotta have the proper growth mindset to be able to persevere. Yes! The Brew Guru, that's her YouTube channel name, and I think that's perfect for what, who she is. She's completely passionate about what she does, and that really is mirrored through her students. We throw a big Oktoberfest here every year. It's the true spirit of it, and the real spirit comes from the Oompa band that we have. And we have a dance later on that's called the Schnitzelbank. Oh, Hello, and welcome to Classroom Close-Up New Jersey. I'm your host, Sean Spiller. You're never too old to learn something new. I'm learning all the time, and I'm not a kid anymore. But I am a science teacher, and believe me, you're never too young to learn something new either. A little later, we'll focus on elementary school students who are learning how to program computers. But first, a reading initiative promoting character education. It all begins the day before 9-11. Can you see our, uh, all of our students are here today? Absolutely. Today, all the students at Kumpf Middle School have the opportunity to meet Tom Rogers, the author of their summer reading book, Eleven. Good morning, everybody. How are you? That's right. All 496 students read the same book. Kind of a novel idea, don't you think? Today we started our One School, One Book project. We wanted everybody to read the same book throughout the, the school and to use that as our kickoff and our theme for our character education. It's a wonderful novel about a young boy who's turning 11 on 9-11. He spends the day learning about the tragic events and having to be responsible for his sister and waiting for his dad. So that's the character journey. It's really about um, growing up and, and becoming a becomes a better person for it over the course of the day. He has a lot of really great characteristics which lend itself to our character education program. We're going to talk a little bit about some symbols in the novel. As curriculum writers, uh, Ms. Fabrizio and I decided to focus uh, every month on something that Tom Rogers mentioned and also incorporate some of the guidance, like character ed ideas and see how they could all relate. So one day a month during an extended homeroom. We're gonna kind of combine everything together and have a focus for that day. Do you guys have some ideas of symbols in your head that represent 9-11 to you? This month happened to be symbolism and imagery from the novel. We had a note card and we had to write a symbol that resembled 9-11, so like the American flag, the Twin Towers, unity, all that. Why did you choose a flag? Who would like to say why they chose a flag? Emma, what? Because of the iconic photo of the firefighters raising the flag, I said when we all crash, we all rise. Character education is an important part of the education process now um, in the state of New Jersey with the harassment, intimidation, and bullying policies. You have to teach it in the school. Um, the spirit of the law is to make kids aware of uh, HIV and to make kids aware that, you know, how other people react. And we felt using this book um, as a kickoff would keep the program new and innovative as opposed to just being something they've heard over and over and over again. We want to make sure that the kids have fresh ideas, new ideas, and using a common book gave them a common theme and something to relate to. We created a curriculum that really centered around the book but yet could be done throughout the uh, classes and throughout the different disciplines. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be focusing on figurative language and some other aspects of figurative language in addition to the symbolism that we know so much in 11. In my language arts class, we had um, the students talk about different ways that Tom Rogers um, used different literary techniques. Chapter 5, it's an idiom, serious case of cupcakes on the brain. A lost cell phone buzzed to life. You're, you're doing my heart good, Julia. In mine, for example, um, students were asked to write um, a verse to America the Beautiful about 9-11. Remember that you're trying to invoke images of hope, right? And courage, that's what a lot of us said. Standing together, 
Um, I feel like it's good to have character education because this stuff doesn't get taught in normal classes. You have to have a way to figure out what the stuff is in the world, not just like science, math, social studies, language arts. You have to know like skills that you would actually take into the real world. Like maybe like saying hello, good morning to everybody in the morning or like something really simple like holding open the door. Having good character traits means that the person's heart is on the right path. One thing I would want to tell you is how excited I am that the whole school has this experience and that we have this common bond and you can pull a science teacher, you can pull a math teacher, you can pull the art teacher and they're all going to know what you're talking about and they're all trying to incorporate the character education lessons that we're doing in their different classes. That would be another way that we could symbolize our respect. When you infuse character ed in any kind of program, you're teaching some valuable skills that they'll need for life. I mean, I would love for them to memorize the preposition song and sing it to their children when they're babies. I would love that. But truly, what's most important, that they can really be good people, that they can um, adapt to people's differences and accept people's differences and understand that people are coming from different places. And when you infuse character ed into a program like that, um, they begin to see it as something that's kind of natural and not so separate. They're my hope for the future. So uh, every day I come to school and I want to be a good role model for them and I want them to be good humans as they leave this building and it's just, it's about making the world a better place, honestly. Nine Eleven changed America, but it can be difficult to connect kids to something that happened before they were born. So how do you engage young learners? A riveting story is one way. Also, robots, of course. The day has arrived where we're going to take our stories that we created with the Azabot and we are going to showcase them. I am the STEM teacher here at the Charles Harper School for grades three through five. We've been working for many weeks on the concept of coding, concept of design. The Ozobot is this little robot about the size of a quarter. Put them on there and let them go. And it reads and processes codes by colors. If it, you want to go right, you would just put in this code. You draw a black line, then it's blue, red, and green. They take the little codes on the Azabot chart here and they draw it onto the paper. The thing here is that on the bottom of the Azabot, there are these little eyes and it will read the codes according to the eyes and then process that code and do some sort of action. So right here is a back walk. It's going to turn around and walk backwards. The markers you use for the codes are green, blue, red, and black. You're basically making a path for it to follow and it works. When the bad witches came to see the destruction, they saw that the robot was coming after them. The students were tasked with creating a story uh, that went along with coding. Once upon a time, there was the greatest mountain climber in all of Butter, Jacob. Tim and I work hand in hand. I am a math teacher, but I did work with the language arts component. I, I still enjoy language arts, and it was a key piece to working with the Ozobots. He avoided it. He climbed and climbed until he was on top of Mount Ozob. They wrote the story uh, while they were planning out what codes they could utilize. At last, the good witches were at peace with the world. My story was Goodbye Bad Witches. We had two Ozobots. One was the Bad Witches, the other was the Robot. Meanwhile, the good witches were busy putting up Halloween decor. The robot went home, did a little victory dance. Ozobots could be used in real life. They could help people like if they want to be an engineer. We made this story together. We both thought of um, individual parts and then put them together to make one whole story. And then the board, we made the Ozobot go on. He built something, I built something. It zigzagged all over the place. And then once you put it all together, I like seeing how it goes through all the codes and stuff. On a delightful day, he started his journey. Hand by hand, foot by foot, he climbed the mountain. My class is the advanced math students. They really dive into it and they really want to know more. And the kids are really into the learning and they're excited to come to STEM class. We each make our own tracks. 
and sometimes you can like mix it up. And then we're going to try and see who goes to the end first. Ready, set, go. Jackson's in the lead. He's gonna take a turn. Yes! <laughs> we're changing the way we're delivering instruction to children to be able to prepare them for the 21st century. So who's gonna go on pre? A lot of people like to become engineers and scientists, and it takes a lot of coding to make sure, like, especially if you want to program like a robot. My favorite part of coding is that there's so many codes that the Ozo walk into, and that gives anybody a lot of freedom to do a lot with just like one little thing. The overall goal here would be to set up the steps for the child to be able to work in a workforce. While this looks very simple, what you see here is they need to be able to work with other people. They need to overcome mistakes and challenges. They gotta have the proper growth mindset to be able to persevere. And then it should knock down the dominoes. And this is the beginnings of that. Failure is acceptable part of learning. It's necessary. It's gonna start off with a black line. And we're trying to change that thought process to get them to understand that you need failure to succeed. And then that to go left. <laughs> Maybe get it a little closer to the black line. STEM is the way of the future. It's not how I learned in school. It's more of teamwork, collaboration, computers, technology. Society is digital. The crowd went wild for Kylo. <laughs> go, Kylo, go! Woo! They're more eager to learn the math rather than doing it on a paper and pencil. They're more into it. They're more excited to be there, and it will hit all levels of learners. It just depends on the level of coding, and they're also going to work in teams while they're working. So if you have someone that really, really understands it, they can help someone who really might not understand it as well. Just like in the workforce, we all work together. We have to work as a team. It's just a basic color code, but who knows where that will go after the color code, and what else are they going to want to code in the future? I am very proud of them. <laughs> we don't like to teach things in isolation. This is like a pot of soup where you're combining everything in. We want to be able to combine things like literacy and math and the arts into a subject instead of teaching in isolation. We're just beginning to retool the way we think and the way we deliver instruction to prepare our students for the 21st century. I'm proud that the district has been able to provide this type of program for our students, to realizing the importance of it, that it's going to benefit them, and that every child, whether your special needs all the way up to advanced, is going to get to experience these types of things to open up opportunities in their lives that they wouldn't necessarily had in my generation or previous generations. Nice. When we return, more love for science. Stay tuned. I think the major impact that Classroom Close-Up has had on me personally is how it has built a sense of community whenever the show has come to film our school and really brought us together as a cohesive team. And to me, that window into my classroom, that window into the programs that we do at our school, have just been so powerful and so meaningful for me personally. They say a magician never reveals their secrets. Unless, of course, the secret is science. The card is a to the jar, and if we slowly remove the card, the water stays in the jar because we've got this layer of surface tension here along the mouth of the jar, and you can see the little beads forming, so all the water's clinging to each other. And you've also got the air pressure holding it in, but if we tilt the jar and let some air in, it'll change the pressure, and all the water falls out. <laughs> Hands-on science is just one of the tricks teacher Maria De Bruin uses to get her students excited to learn. I teach AP chemistry and honors chemistry, and I've taught all sections of chemistry and science. I love science. That's who I am. Hi! Today, De Bruin's class is sharing that love by demonstrating the magic of chemical bonding for students at Herbertsville Elementary. We're going to show you what hydrogen bond looks like using people. If I tried to pull one of them, it's hard because they're holding on to each other. 
I make sure that all of my lessons involve something that they can get their hands on or relate to. I like to use my students, so I'll make them get up and participate with me. And then any sort of labs or activities or demonstrations are always really helpful to get them engaged and have fun because if they're interested, then they're gonna learn and they're gonna remember. Your objective today is to make one silver penny and one gold penny. And so when you walk out of here, you should have two beautiful pennies. One thing which is very important, I don't care what subject you teach, is connection with the students. She brings out a love for chemistry in them. And to me, that's really, truly a great educator that can reach out to their kids like that and, you know, make that impact on them. And then put it right here. Oh, that's so cool. The Brew Guru, that's her YouTube channel name, and I think that's perfect for what, who she is. Um, she's completely passionate about what she does, and that really is mirrored through her students. Three, two, one. Maria's students put their passion on display each year at Science Night Out. We have a lot of the younger kids from the elementary schools, middle schools, they come out and we put on a bunch of science tricks and uh, experiments for them. There's people sitting on the floors. That's how crowded it is. The shows are geared to get kids really excited about science. You know, they learn wonderful content from their teachers. They are engaging them, they're getting them interested, but it's, it's not easy for every teacher to put together sort of all these demonstrations. And that's where I come in and my students come in. What's really cool about it is that we get to design our own experiments. It's such a proud moment when you finally get to just perform it in front of the whole crowd. I remember on stage I could see like the reactions of like all the elementary school kids faces and that just made me like happy to be up there doing science and you know it might inspire like a f like future scientists. Let's give all of the chemistry students a big round of applause. In a roundabout way, De Bruin's teaching career began when she was a student. I've known Maria for a long time. Actually, she was one of my students when I taught advanced placement chemistry. I was at Merck, and the superintendent at the time, Mr. Hersenko, reached out to my parents looking for me. Walter brought her, you know, in for an interview, and the moment she came in, she just stood out over everybody else by heads and tails. Long story short, my high school chemistry teacher hired me to be a chemistry teacher. And that was a good decision because in 2017, De Bruin's impact as a teacher was recognized with a Milken Educator Award. The day that they announced the Milken Award was the most unbelievable moment of my life. It has changed things for me in ways that I didn't expect. They really ignite you and motivate you to do even more than you're doing. We think we're all doing a great job, but there's actually more. Just like I tell my students all the time, you could do more. And so I'm excited for all the new opportunities that I'm seeking out because of the Milken family. If we add a little bit of copper to silver, it makes it a much stronger substance. And so that's why you wear sterling silver jewelry, because then it doesn't bend as much. She never stops. She never stops. She's always trying to wonder, how can I take another step? How can I make this experience better? How can I make it more thorough? How can I be better and make the kids feel better? It's impressive to watch. It's a neat energy that she never seems to run out of. It's science! <laughs> because she just involves all her students in everything. And I have such a bond with not only her, but the other students from the class now. We're all friends, and we all remember all the fun times we had in chemistry together. Before I took chemistry with Mr. Bruin, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. Now I want to go into chemical engineering when I go into college. When someone follows in your footsteps, it's really rewarding because you know you made a difference. And I think I made a difference as a teacher, and I know that she makes a difference every day. Wait for it. Oh my, my goal as a teacher is not just to teach them chemistry, right? That's an, a good idea. I want them to learn chemistry. They don't realize that my true goal is to make sure that they believe in themselves that I'm inspiring them to know that they can work harder than they ever thought possible, that they can achieve goals greater than what they ever imagined. I want them to know that I care about them and that I am genuinely interested in their success. See Shaolin Classroom close up on your page!
You know how sometime in late September you start thinking, well, summer's over and the sun's setting earlier. You've already got a ton of homework or work work, depending on your age. So what would be a good way to cope? Hey, what about a big party in October? We throw a big Oktoberfest here every year. Nice laughing game. This is Oktoberfest at Collingswood High School. And it's a lot more than just a party. It's also a fundraiser, so the money that we earn from this also goes towards supporting the exchange. So when the German kids come here from Germany, we send a bus over and pick them up at the Philly airport. Oh yeah, it's a big deal in Collingswood when the Germans are coming. Every two years, German students arrive in the spring, enjoy the local sights and activities, including field trips to Washington, D.C. and New York City. In the summer, Collingswood students head to Germany where they spend a few weeks with their exchange partners. You can imagine there are quite a few expenses and this helps defray all those costs. I would not be able to do this myself, obviously. Students and the parents help out. In the kitchen, my wife's actually kind of leading things back there. Her mother was a caterer and she knows a lot about kitchen work. Okay, looking good. A little bit longer, I think. Typically, it's German potatoes. That's a huge production. Dicing up the potatoes, and then there's this whole process of buttering and salting and peppering the potatoes and putting them on trays and getting them baked. It's really a fascinating experience. Collingswood, were really lucky. We got a lot of people who are very eager to help out. There you go, sir. Do you want a hard pretzel, too? Cheddarfield, bratwurst. Collingswood parents have been great. They've really stepped up, grilling up the brats and then keeping them warm. And there's a lot of fine-tuning in the kitchen, and they have to prepare the desserts and get them all plated. We have different German foods, German music. We have different German outfits that we wear. We also have the German cones, which is significant because in Germany, it's tradition for kindergartners for their first day of school to receive a cone, and inside the cone, they're filled with different candy. So we introduced it here, so it's like welcoming the other schools to our school. The students from the other schools are all students who are also taking German at their respective high schools or middle schools, and uh, their teachers want to give them a little taste of Germany for the evening. The whole thing is a lot of fun. It's just the music and it's the all the other schools coming together and celebrating this one thing that we all have in common. I've been here every year. So uh, all five years I've been participating in Oktoberfest and German Club. Right now I'm the German Club president. It's a good celebration of the German culture. Everyone's together having a good time. So I've got German heritage, and I've always been interested in like exploring that and learning more about that. And I thought it would be easy to do if I knew the language, so I could learn more about where my family's from and their culture back in like the 1910s when they moved here. It's a really cool way for kids to get more out of a foreign language other than nouns and verbs. One of the things I love about Collingswood, it's a very family-oriented town and school and community. A lot of parents come out for it. I see a lot of the same faces from year to year as their kids are going through the German program, you know, starting in ninth grade and then as 12th graders. They come out not just one year, but multiple years, come out and support the event and the kids. And uh, it's just a really nice um, way to interact with a lot of our families. And we have a dance later on that's called the Schnitzelbank, and they sing along to that one in German. Ah, the Schnitzelbank song. A catchy German ditty that gets everyone singing. In case your German's a little rusty, here's some background. Schnitzelbank means carving bench or scrap bench. Each verse introduces a silly topic, which is added to the list, and the singers sing it all back to the beginning, ending each verse with, oh, you wonderful carving bench. As the list grows, the song gets faster and sillier. Maybe you learn some new German words, and everyone has a lot of fun. I made most of my friends through Oktoberfest and the German club. And I think that means a lot to people to come here and make friends that are interested in learning about German just like you are. Our kids love it so much, this event so much, that we'll often see graduates coming back to the event. I already saw a few tonight. Yep, in fact, that's me and my kid, Collingswood class of 2017. So it's great to see that they're still connected to the school because they had such a good experience with Oktoberfest while they were here.
wanted to end on a celebration because this is the final episode of our 25th season. We began airing stories from the front lines of education back in 1994. For the past quarter century, we've met thousands of students in over 1,500 schools from across the Garden State. We're proud to have featured so many of the unsung heroes in the school community who are making a difference for future generations to come. If you love these stories as much as we do, you'll be able to watch Encore presentations right here each week. And remember to visit our website where you can find every story in our archives. We hope you'll continue to learn, to continue to be inspired by the great things happening in our public schools. For Classroom Close-Up New Jersey, I'm Sean Spiller. Thanks for watching.